In this video presentation, I'm going to teach you how to run through some simple active range of motion test for the cervical spine. Now, with my model Max, what we're going to ask him to do shortly is basically to rotate to one side and then rotate the other side. He's going to side bend, yeah, either side. He's going to flex and extend. So the tests are quite simple. And then what we'll try to do, we'll try to isolate it to C1 and C2 as well. Now, one of the ways, I'm just going to get him to sit a little taller there. The reason why I do that is because if a patient just let yourself slump again, the neck will automatically change position by the person slumping and rounding the shoulders. You almost have a forward head carriage, and then the middle to lower part of the cervical spine almost seems to get a little bit compressed. So I would try to get the person to sit up as much as they can. I would also place my hands either side like this, and I have a tendency to extend my fingers. So when the person rotates to one side, I can see the discrepancy between one side compared to the other side. So let's look at the rotation. If you think about it logically, rotation will be the main motion patients will mention to you when they come to see you. They're not gonna mention looking up hurts or looking down. Side bending is more about when I look over my right shoulder, when I look over my left shoulder and so on. So let's go through that one first of all. Place your hands like this, extend the fingers, and then what I want you to do is rotate to this side, please, as far as you comfortably can, and then look to see how much range of motion he has and the distance between the finger and naturally the jawbone. And then relax, go back to neutral, and then rotate the other side. You will probably notice if there's any restriction, the patient will let you know. How does it feel? Mm, not as so far. Okay, so he feels limited going this side, okay? You can't really see it by my finger, but then there was a slight discrepancy between the distance from my finger to his jaw. Now, that is active range, so we can't really decipher why he has that restriction. Bring your chin down as far as you comfortably can to see what he's like. Can the chin approximate the chest? Yes, in his case. And relax. Be careful if you're going to get him to look up, okay, because it can irritate the facet joints along here. And then slowly side bend to the one side, good. If he feels pain on this side, it's purely because he's compressing the facets. If he feels pain on this side, it's because he's stretching the tissue. Ideally, around 45 degrees would be relatively normal. I'm going, going this way, I'm trying not to passively help him. How do you find that one? That's okay? Yeah, that one's better than you Yeah, okay, so there's a slight discrepancy yeah, a side bend into this side. And again, if he side bends this way again, you can palpate the tissues of a trapezius. The scalenes will get involved as well. The sternomastoid is involved. So it's hard to say why that could be. It could be facet joints on this side, not allowing to open. It could also be facet joints on this side, not allowing to close. So it's hard to say, is it the trapezius? Is it the scalenes? Is it the facet? Because it's active range of motion. But it just gives you an idea. So we've done flexion, we've done extension, we've done side bending, and we've done rotation. Now, if I get him to flex halfway, and then slowly rotate whichever direction, and see how that feels. So this is basically testing C1 and C2, and then rotating the other side. Because the idea is, is that the ligament, nuchi between C2 and C7 locks. So in flexion, so when you are in flexion, those tissues are pretensioned, and because there's no ligament attaching from C1 to C2, which is the AA joint, which is called the atlantoaxial joint, then that is where most of the motion comes from. So if he is restricted in flexion, say to the right side, then it could well be the problem is restriction of the AA joint on the opposite side. And vice versa, if he's restricted this way, then it could be restricted on this side. Okay, so that is simple, some active range of motion tests performed for the cervical spine.